Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I am doing a collective haul. Um, I have some makeup, some stuff from Amazon, and quite a few books. I'm gonna try not to spend too much time on the makeup just because I have like 15 books, but I wanna fit everything in one video. Collective over the past couple of months, um, just some transitional, moving into fall kind of stuff. One of the first things that I got was this Makeup Forever HD Skin Foundation. I'm in the shade for Y60. Uh, it's going to become one of my staple favorites. I'm wearing it right now. It's not heavy at all, but it honestly, I would say, is medium to full coverage, but it's so lightweight. It almost goes on like a kind of like a skin tint, but it covers so much more. I will say that this, um, you kind of have to be selective about the way that you powder it. It's not a glowy foundation, but it will transfer. That's something that I've noticed, especially on oily skin, but I feel like the, the shade range is so good, and so yeah, I really love this one. I've actually been burning this candle already, but it is a replica by the Fireplace Candle. I got this for my birthday. Um, it smells just like, I don't know how to describe it, I would say like it smells like burning wood but also just a lot more fragrant than that it's definitely more of a woodsy smell i guess you could say it leans towards like more of a masculine smell um i think i i also had this in a um like a travel size perfume i really prefer this as a candle i think that it is more of a room kind of uh smell so this is something that I like to light during the fall. It's just really good. So in my new package that I just opened from Sephora, um, one of the first things that I got is this Rifey. Rifey. It's a dual-ended kind of foundation brush. I got this because Monet McMichael uses it and her makeup always looks flawless. So I just used this today to put on my makeup. Um, this side is like you can swirl your foundation and then i use this side for concealer and i really like it i definitely have to go on it because i feel like i always use something more dense for my foundation and concealer but i feel like um even like this side for blending out my concealer i feel like i you use, use this kosas concealer it's really lightweight sometimes where um when i blend it out it kind of like disappears so um it never even dawned on me dawned on me that maybe i was not using the right like tool to blend it out um and so i actually felt like i could actually see this concealer and i like it just because of the shade and it's lightweight but now i actually feel like i can use it the way that it's meant to be used and then i just got this wet detangler brush from amazon it's just kind of like a wide tooth comb kind of brush i use like a pick anyway to detangle i just wanted to get a designated brush that I could keep in the shower. I picked up this LYS bronzer. This is in the shade dark. Um, I think there is one shade that is darker than this. It does look pretty deep, but I feel like it blends out really, really well. You definitely don't need a lot. It's extremely smooth. Um, and so, yeah, I also ordered the powder. Like, I don't know, I don't think it's translu translucent, but like their powder. Um, and I got an email a few days later that it was sold out. So I was like, dang, because this is amazing. So I know that the powder probably would have been really good, but I'm gonna get that powder because I know it's gonna be good, especially after using this. I got this Amika Curl Corpse Defining Cream. Um, I saw Lissetti use this in her curly hair routine. I rarely wear my natural hair in a wash and go um, because it just sometimes, it takes a long time y'all so i could use it for a wash and go but i think that what i would do is use this to like twist or braid my hair and then i would when i take the braid or twist out out i would have this sometimes it can you your hair can get dry when you're braiding it and everything like that so i'm excited about this it's a ton of product i also got this olaplex number no. four bond maintenance and clarifying shampoo i have the regular shampoo um, I just wanted to get a clarifying one since I'll probably wear my hair like out for like two or three days and then for the next two days before I wash it I'll put it in a bun and sometimes um, to get the gel and remove all of that can be like really difficult. It actually used to be something that seemed so hard back in the day so 
I got a clarifying shampoo. This is not something that I would use every wash. I might only use this like once a month. Um, or like if I just know my hair is like really icky or something like that, just to like get it really clean. And I think that this is safe for color. My hair is not colored right now, but I really want to dye it black in a couple of weeks. So I would like it to last. So we'll see. I also got a restock of the Brazilian Bum Bum Cream. Um, it's funny because I just bought the mini in like late July, early August as like a pre-birthday gift to myself. And me and my boyfriend went through that mini one in like uh, not even three weeks. I mean, it was just like ridiculous. And um, he doesn't normally use stuff, but like he will, like if he needs lotion and stuff. But um, so I was like, you know what? I don't even know why I fooled around. I got the small one, I should've got the big one. And now I got it. <laughs> and the last thing that I got from Sephora is this caked up candle from Forever Mood, Jackie Aina's candle line. This is my favorite candle ever. It smells amazing. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and read the scent details so that way I'm not like trying to describe it crazy. The base is vanilla bean and musk. The heart is honey, jasmine, and coconut, and the top is roasted pistachio, almond cream, and pineapple. I think it just smells like cake, but not overly sweet, and I just love it. I mean, it just smells incredible. I have one that I've like burned to a crisp, and like literally, you probably shouldn't do this. If you've ever had a candle that is like literally down to the bottom, and it will, it literally goes out on its own because there is no more, there's no wick. <laughs> like that is me with this candle so I went ahead and picked up another one because I was in dire need all right so now onto the book part in no particular order the first book that I have is lean in for graduates by Cheryl Sandberg I actually saw this recommended on LinkedIn but it was just the regular version I didn't know that there was even a graduate version um, and so this is kind of for the graduate portion I think it's like just advice about the job hunt resumes that sort of thing um but it also just includes some stories about people who are trying to lean in and enjoy their day-to-day -day life i think that's one thing as an adult that's like so different is that um there is so much kind of like time up in the air that is yours and you really have to have that discipline to do what you want with that time in order for it to be valuable. And sometimes um, when you're a kid or you're a student, you don't really have that. It's just, you you know, you know you have to do X, Y, Z. Um, and so I just thought this would be interesting to read. The next book that I got is A Model Summer by Polina Poriskova. This is about a girl. Um, I am not sure what country she's from, but I think this all takes place in Europe and she goes from she's like very tall, very unique looking, and then she is scouted by like a model management company and she moves to Paris for the summer and is like this very high profile model. Um, I think she's only 15 years old. And if I remember correctly from the synopsis, I think that she is like gets into a relationship and it's her life just changes like 100%. It's very dense and the words are very small. I saw it on Instagram. I thought it was gonna be interesting. So I went ahead and picked this up. The next book that I got that I'm excited about is Blackout. This is a collection of essays written by different authors. I got this because of Tiffany D. Jackson. I love her writing, um, but I'm really excited to read from these other authors as well. This is stories about a city like a neighborhood city um or a city neighborhood neighborhood city a neighborhood in a city that it's a blackout and it's just kind of all the stories of different i guess like teens i think um tiffany jackson typically writes for young adults so young adults teenagers and what they are doing during the blackout it's not very long at all um so yeah i think this will be good next book that i have is Carrie Soto is Back by Taylor Jenkins Reid. So this is Carrie Soto's new book. I think it came out um, later in August and I had it on pre-order. I have not heard anybody talk about this, good or bad. I just not, I haven't seen it. Um, I think it'll be good. It is about this tennis player. I'm assuming this is she. 
and I think she's like the best in the world. She goes into retirement and then I think she comes out of retirement because she's so competitive. I'm not gonna lie, I don't know if the story in itself is interesting, but I like Taylor Jenkins Reid as a storyteller. So I think that she will be able to tell this story really well. The next book that I have is The Mamas by Helena Andrews Dyer. What I learned about kids class in race from moms not like me. So this is about a black woman and she moves to a very like up like upper class neighborhood in Washington DC. Um, that is known to be very progressive and just really open and friendly but it is majority white and this is a black woman and I think that um, you know despite and she joins this group called the mamas I think that maybe she was under the impression that it was going to just be a lot more diverse than what it was um, and it is just about kind of different things that she learns about these women who might be different from her and vice versa so i thought it was going to be really good the next book that i got is equal partners improving gender equality at home by kate mangino so i think that this book um looking at it it doesn't appear to be what it sounds like it will be i think this is seems to be more of a case study on gender in general for um, millennials and maybe some late Gen Z they're just like flipping through it it looked like there was kind of like it's saying like um, one of the pages says list five characteristics that you feel are commonly used to describe an ideal man I thought that was interesting also says something like um, what are significant points in your life that you feel like make most sense to you like it might not be the same as other people some people are you know really want a job whereas other people really want children and so i just thought it was really different and seemed interesting and also um is talking about like the social norms of weddings and baby showers um gender reveals and all that kind of stuff so i just thought it was going to be really interesting and i picked it up the next book that i have is so you've been publicly shamed by john bronson i got this off of re recommendation from youtube i cannot remember who um off the top of my head but i know that it's like a non-fiction very interesting non-fiction written from the perspective or kind of like following the stories and lives of people who have been shamed and what is shame why do we feel shamed what does the public have to do with shame like that kind of thing and i don't know i just thought it seemed interesting um i feel like shame there's a book that i read that i wanted to discuss at the end of the month i'm gonna do a wrap up from august and september yeah august and september and i think that book really heavily surrounded shame and kind of just the use of it use of it as an emotion i have like some thoughts so pick this one up the next book that i have is book lovers by emily henry i got it from target i now have every single emily henry book and have not read a single emily henry book i don't know why i feel like i get so caught up in the hype and i think it would sound good but I it's just like I have to hit, have the moment um I got this before road trip thinking that I would pick it up and read it during the road trip and I didn't I actually ended up reading a mystery thriller that I'll be talking about at the end of the month um but if you don't know the synopsis this is I think about like two people who work in the realm of publishing or like I don't know literary agents or whatever and the main character Nora she keeps running into this guy they've like they know each other from like common workspaces i'm not sure if they work in the same company or if they work for competing companies but they don't like each other and nora is like not like the like fun sunshine girl she's like a cutthroat like go-getter very disciplined um and yeah like i've just heard so many people like this one because they can really relate to nora um just I don't know i don't read that many romance novels but sometimes you know it's like this the girl is I, i'm not even, i don't read enough romances but like if the girl is like really sweet or whatever or the romance just like pops off like and it's just like okay but like that wouldn't really maybe happen <laughs> like that so i picked this one up hopefully i get around to it because i have every single emily henry book that i can get around to 
The next book that I have is Jackie and Me by Louis Lois Bay Bayard. Um, and this is a, a historical fiction about Jackie Kennedy and her relationship with John F. Kennedy and um, kind of following her from when she was a young, like, teenager maybe or like a young woman and how she meets him and then how her life changes as he becomes the president. Um, and I just thought it sounded really interesting. There was another book uh, a couple years ago, maybe during the pandemic, about... Um, about Hillary Clinton. It was historical fiction. I think it was called Ro Rodham or Rodham or something. That's like her name that she had before she was married. I never picked that one up even though I've seen it in the library a lot and I was very interested in it but I feel like some people said it was boring and I got like caught up in that. So I'm interested in reading this. The next book that I have is Healing When a Nurse Becomes a Patient by Teresa Brown, a registered nurse. Um, and so this is about a nurse who is diagnosed with breast cancer and she goes from being a nurse and a caregiver herself to the patient. And I think it's just kind of like allowing her to see the way that care is done and performed and kind of like from, I would say like the full scope of the medical process from someone who's not in that field i guess from the onset of her symptoms to you know going to the doctor to you know needing a nurse surgeries all that kind of thing um is like a process and, and something that she was a part of but never experienced herself and so i thought this would be really interesting the next book that i have is kind of like a self-help sort of book called um, Embrace Your Almost by Jordan Ali Tooley. Find clarity and contentment in the in-betweens, not quite in unknowns. And it is a book um, written for women or like that's the audience. Anybody could read it, but um, kind of just about finding clarity and grounding yourself in the unknown. Um, there was a point um, in the synopsis that I thought was really interesting that in this day and age, women can do anything almost anything and everything they want um and but when you have that flexibility to refine that and know what you want to do can be a really difficult process and that's something that I have so felt um in my life like and something that has been I mean pretty much ever since I graduated from high school going to college like choosing a major and then um classes jobs like you have so much flexibility um I commend and actually find it so inspiring when I see women who know or it appears that they know what they want or they you know just start a go-getter because it can be really difficult um and sometimes you're just like kind of doing things with faith and you're like I hope this works out I hope I like it so I thought this would be really good. And these are the last four books um, that I got from the Nowhere Bookstore. My boyfriend and I just went on Saturday, last Saturday. It's located in San Antonio, Texas, northeast, northeast San Antonio, Texas. Um, one of my favorites, so worth it. Super cute, has like the staff recommendations. Those are my favorite like things to see at a bookstore i just love when the staff <laughs> recommendations like that's like my favorite thing um in the world so the first book that i have is girlhood by melissa fabos fabos um and this is a collection of short stories and essays written about her experiences as a girl growing up and then as a young woman and different experiences that she has i thought that i had this i have so many books that i think look like this and then books that say I know I have a book that says girlhood, but I don't think it's this one. I actually have to go look. Um, and so I picked this one up. You all know I love a short story. I love some essays. I love a nonfiction essay collection. The next book that I got that I'm really excited about is Arrival Stories. Women Share Their Experiences of Becoming Mothers, collected by Amy Schumer and Christy Turlington Burns. So the cool thing about this is that all of these stories are from celebrities. I just thought that was really interesting. I was going to get it anyway because I just thought it was really neat. Um, and so some of the celebrities that we'll hear from are Serena Williams. That sold me immediately. Jill Scott, Ashley Graham, um, Amy Schumer, like Emily Oyster. I just thought it was like super cool. So 
I picked this up um, and yeah I don't know I thought it would just be super neat to hear and I love hearing just different stories about um, lives that I haven't experienced or I've not yet to experience I'm not a mother yet I don't think I will be for several years but I thought this would be neat so the last two books that I got are like murder mysteries so I have more than you'll ever know by Katie Gutierrez this sounds so good it is about a woman who is living in Laredo Texas I was like okay Texas um, and she has two husbands one that lives in Mexico City and one that lives with her in Texas and they kill each other <laughs> so I, I don't even you don't even have to tell me anything more because I was like it's it's coming home with me so that's like it I mean I know it's like more than that but they find out about each other apparently they have like no idea who each other are or whatever there's like no inclination that um, she would have two husbands like it's just so random i don't know if anybody else even knows that she has two husbands i have no idea how she met them but all i know is that they end up killing each other so i picked this one up so the last book that i have last but not least is real easy by mary by mary rutkowski this is a about an exotic dancer um she's actually very experienced in the nightlife scene and she sees a younger girl she, who starts working in the scene with her um, and just notices her doing like some really like dangerous things obviously you have to be really careful and um, kind of just very observant working in that scene in general I mean even just going to the club in general you have to be very observant um, and I think she just sees the girl like getting taking rides from strangers like leaving like at night like by herself I like, walk to the parking lot just like stuff where she's like girl like you can't do that and so she kind of takes her under her wing and offers her a ride and I think it becomes a regular thing night the girl you know is like can you take me home she's like sure and she ends up murdered um, the main character and the girl is okay and so it kind of just goes from there it gets really deep and gritty about just the nightlife scene in general who would have done this um they did say that the main character has like an abusive boyfriend she has a daughter so it's all kinds of stuff and just i think that this is going to be more of a dive into how we protect women or how society may or may not protect women who work in this industry so i'm just really interested to read that all right y'all 15 books later i'm finally finished thank you so much for watching bye